Hey there, Dengas2 here. Today's video is about getting power from the batteries up to the wheelhouse on the trawler and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. It's been quite a while since I've been on the trawler, as some of you have commented, and uh, you know it's nice to get back into it now. The plan is to get power up to the wheelhouse, both switched and unswitched power, so that I can start installing all the electrical stuff I need to. Top priority for me really is just getting some lights on board, the simple things like that. But you know, once you've got a solid backbone of electrics, adding individual devices is quite trivial as long as you sort of do your, your groundwork properly. All right. I thought I'd start with a bit of a clean up just to make it easy to move around and get working here. Did a little bit of vacuuming in here, moved some stuff. This was a real mess. Still a lot of stuff on the dash because uh, that's where most electrical work's happening. Bit of water in the bilge here. It's not quite up to the float switches here, so I'm going to turn it on manually, we'll pump that out, and then I will actually get the wet and dry vac and just clean all this out. The bilge here is quite dry, so it's obviously not dripping from the stern gland. We did actually have a huge amount of rain while I was away, so I'm presuming a lot of this is just rainwater. I could taste it, see if it's salty. Mm, it is a little bit salty, but... Um, I know a lot of water came in through the stern gland before I tightened it up as well. So we'll get this dried up, keep an eye on it. Bilge rats feed are dry, so that's a good sign. So while I was away in the US, Leon said to me, oh look, I knew you didn't get a chance to set the solar cells up. So he actually came in his boat out to the trawler and wired a couple of the solar cells. We've got six all up, but he wired two of them up for me to make sure the batteries didn't go flat while I was away. So huge thanks to Leon. They're the kind of friends everyone needs. So Leon just put a couple of the solar cells on deck, wired them up and just ran them through the old exhaust to the charger for me. Down here you can see a lot of rubbish, some exhaust components, you know, conduit piping. I'm going to get this all out of the way. Then I've got my battery chargers here. So I'm going to get those and I'm going to mount them on a board here so they're nice and out of the way and they're less likely to get wet should a bit of water come up the bilge here. By the time water's a foot up the bulkhead here, I think we're in trouble. I need to mount it up here, but we do actually have a working manual bilge pump switch at the moment. This is our negative bus bar here. This is our 12 volt house bank positive, and I'm now gonna install the 24 volt house bank positive. So we've got three battery banks all up. We've got 12 volt house, 24 volt house, and 24 volt starter. This door is pretty soft wood, so we don't have to pre-drill, which is nice. Because Leon and I did a lot of these electrics in a bit of a rush before I went overseas, we didn't get as much labeling done as we would have liked. The actual layout's great, but I just need to label things before the memory fades. So I'll show you what we got. At the moment, we've got this Red Arc 30 amp solar regulator, picking up those two solar cells that are just sitting on the deck down there. And it is then charging the 24 volt house system. Then, this other Red Arc unit, the BCDC 1220, uh, sorry, 1250, is then converting that 24 volt input to 12 to charge the 12 volt house system. So by having this single um, regulator, we're charging the 24 volt house, the 12 volt house, and then the VSR is actually meaning we're also charging the 24 volt starting batteries. So, so far so good. Then what we've got over here is our 24 volt starter in, 24 volt house in, 12 volt house in, and ground, common ground. So I'm just gonna label these switches. This one here is the emergency parallel. First step then is just to label these up so that you know they can't be confused in the future. To do this, got a real cheap little uh, Dynamo label creator thing here, label printer. I think it was like 50 bucks at um, Officeworks or something, and it's been working really well. I'm 
I'm gonna stick them onto the switches themselves because I don't think much sticks to this polyethylene. This is one of those rare times where I think it actually is okay to indulge in your labeler fetish, you know. I, I just think everything you think you're gonna remember, you don't with electrics. So, just got my switches labeled here. And then just a reminder that this is the 12 volt charging. And then up here is our 24. All right, what I'm gonna do now is we've got our main three feeds going forward. We've got a large ground and then a large 24 volt and a large 12 volt. Now, I actually do already have a ground going forward that's a lighter gauge ground, uh, which is an unswitched ground. So we've got unswitched power going forward that runs our um, bilge pumps. This is actually gonna be our switched power. Now, I wanna be a bit careful about ground loops here. So I'm gonna to have to have a look whether having these multiple wires creates a ground loop or whether it actually just gives us sort of increased capacity still going kind of from point to point. It's like, you know, just a multi-strand wire rather than a loop per se. Uh, particularly given they go to bus bars at each end where they're combined. So I think it's all right, but I'm gonna double check that if it's a problem, particularly for sensitive electronics like the Raymarine um, sat nav I've got, the Sonar in particular, then I'm gonna disconnect all of them except for the main one heavy cable. I'm gonna take these solar cells that Leon wired up for me and I'm gonna whack them on the wheelhouse roof just to get them out of the way for now. Ultimately, they will be in an awning over the back deck here, but I just need the space for now. They're nice and out of the way up there. First thing I do today is pull the rubber ducky out of the water. It's been in the water for about a week now, which is getting on from the point of view of getting growth on the hull. So my plan is just to pull it out of the water every time I'm working on the boat, let it dry out. That's not too bad. Still pretty clean. But if I let it dry each day, it'll stay that way. Needs a bit more air, that's for sure. A lot of people said uh, it's a bad idea working on the boat on the mooring. Better off leaving on the hard stand, but uh, there is one upside. that bait out while we do some electrical before I get in trouble for not doing enough work. Coming up to the front to the wheelhouse now I've got switched power 12 and 24 and a ground and I've got unswitched 12 and 24 here as well. What I'm going to do first is hook this ground up then I'll be able to test all these other leads to figure out whether they're the 12 or the 24 and then wire them up appropriately. These connectors come in all different sizes to match the cable you've got. So in this case, this cable's 16 millimeter square cable and it's a six millimeter lug. So hopefully you can see on there, it'll say 16.6 and that's how we know we got the right one. 
we need a 16 millimetre square die to make sure we're crimping it down to the right pressure. It's been slow progress, but I'm getting there. All right, what we have now, 12 volt house, 24 volt house, and these are unswitched. Currently the only things running off those are the bilge pumps. Then we've now got a 12 volt house switched and 24 volt house switched. They're gonna start running everything else in the wheelhouse up here. So we're getting ready to start, you know, installing things like the Raymarine sat nav, etc., etc. Then here's our negative bus bar. Got a single 25 millimeter squared cable heading back for the ground. This is to make sure we don't end up with any ground loops. We've got a single point going straight back to the batteries and that's it. What I'm gonna do now is crimp some terminals, some ring terminals, onto the end of these two leads that go up to the front. These are gonna come off the back of the 12 volt house switch and the 24 volt house switch and become our switch power supplies for the front. Turned out the terminals on the back of these switches are 10 millimeter terminals and the largest I had were eight, so I've spread them for now. I'll order some new ones online. There's plenty of length to recrimp them, so I'll just do this so I can push on for now. Okay, these two main feeds are connected now. Let's turn these on and go and see if we've got power at those fuse boxes in the wheelhouse. So 28 and 13, cool. My mate, uh, Jeff over here, just came past the boat and Gave me a mullet, he said just fill it, stick a hook through the tail, leave that all day, so see what happens. She might run along. You're gonna try and catch a fish, you may as well try and catch a big one. Now we'll just sit and wait for everyone's favourite sound. <sighs> Where are we? Alright, so today what I have is a couple of cool things. The two USB ports here then rubber seal round, and then this comes down, press, and you can lock it shut. So my plan is to mount that on the outside of the wheelhouse, but what they also sent me was this one, which is a waterproof wireless phone charger. And this is what I'm gonna mount on the dash. All right, so what do we got in the box? Instructions, that's an excellent start. Screws. Installation, active installation jig. That sounds pretty fancy. All right, let's pull it out without damaging anything. All right, why is that there? Uh, okay. Installation instructions. Retain jig for use in step two. Insert the installation jig. Okay. thumb is killing me today. Oh, I see. So, the installation jig holds it open, so you can see your four screw holes there. That's clever. So, obviously designed to mount flat, but ideally for me, I'd wanted it up at some sort of angle. So maybe I need to work at making a bracket you know, I could actually mount it just sort of here on the bulkhead and leave this free for a compass or something. If you're sort of sitting back here at the wheel, not driving, but you know, kicking right back, you can see it quite clearly. That may actually be a better option. This stuff's all been pretty soft. I'll be able to screw straight into it, to be honest with you. So I might just drill a center hole for the power cable and then we'll just screw it straight in.
This unit can run off 12 or 24 volts, so I'm gonna run it on the 24 volt system. Wherever I can, I'm gonna go 24 volts, and the 12 volt will just be for things that I can only get 12 volt. I'm going to need to extend both the positive and the negative wires, so I'll just get a length of this single core for the positive. All right, just gonna put both ends into this butt connector. Crimp this up. Just make sure it's secure, and then we'll put the heat gun on that to shrink it down. Okay, both are secure. Now this timber is onto a steel plate. The steel comes down to about here. So the helm's actually mounted into solid steel, which is great. But what it means is the screws that came with this unit are too long, they'll go into the steel and I don't really want to drill it. I don't have any sharp, small drill bits here. So I'm gonna find some shorter stainless screws and just mount it into the timber alone. Now we've got our four screws in. We can take this little cardboard jig out so it can close up. And it's good, it's in enough that you don't hit your hand on it when you're turning the wheel, which is my only worry about putting it there. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's finish the wiring. All we really need to do is put a ring terminal on both the positive and the negative, go to the negative bus bar, and in this case, to the 24 volt switched uh, fuse panel, house fuse panel. But what I need to do is get to the point where these wires are grouped and have a bit of a coil in them so that as you open and close this, they don't strain the connections, etc. So I'm gonna start having a think about that before it gets any more messy than it already is. It's time to sort that out. All right, gonna come down now. This is the negative. I got it cable tied to these other main leads. And then we'll just put this as a short loop here. So it's not under any sort of stress when the doors open and it'll be under even less when the doors closed. All right, what do we need? A relatively small ring terminal. Okay, positive and negative connected. Now I'll just go see what type of fuse we have to put in and see if it powers up. Of course, we could have run up to a switch, which I may well do in the future, but to be honest with you, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I think I'd just rather leave it permanently powered, but with the fuse. So it says here, uh, input current maximum 1.5 amps. So I'll just have a look what fuses I've got. I don't even know how small they go. What do we got? Three amp, looks like the smallest. So I'll just put a three amp fuse in. Oh yep, there's our red light on the side. So we know we got power. All right, there we go, charging, nice. And now I've gone to the green light on the side. Can turn the wheel without hitting my hand on it. And if I'm sitting in the seat here, I can read it quite nicely. And at the same time, it leaves this space clear, which I think is gonna be more useful. I think with a boat this small, you just gotta use every little space you can. So I think having the phone vertical is gonna work out well. I've gotta figure out what to do for a compass for a steel boat, but I really do like the idea of having a compass very close to being in front of the helm. Anyway, that's another day. So thanks for watching. Nice to get back on the boat and start getting some of this wiring happening. I'm really pleased about having these main fuse panels at the front now. I, uh, you know, that to me is all the heavy lifting when it comes to wiring a boat. Then you just do one thing at a time. Nav lights, internal lights, whatever, you know, it's, it's nice having that solid backbone to build on now. So big thanks to Scanstrut for sending me the uh, rock wireless charger. That's gonna be really cool, as will the waterproof USB ports. 
I've made a bit of a conscious decision with this boat to try and avoid 240 volt wherever I can. So as many things as uh, phone chargers, USB chargers, all that kind of stuff, I want it to come straight from 12 volt. I don't want to go from 12 to 240 back down to, you know, five or 15 or whatever these chargers work on. So this is the way I want to go for almost all the electronics on the boat. I'm going to push on this week now and do more electrical install and some plumbing for the cooling water for the boat. So I'll be filming that for sure. But the next video I'll upload is some work we did on Delstar 2. Uh, Dave spent a lot of money and a lot of time kind of getting that up to scratch. But I gave him a hand installing a new Raymarine Element S sort of GPS sounder unit. So that'll be the next video I upload. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you then. See ya.